if you see, you know, throngs of, of women and children that were murdered on October 7th and uh, countless rapes and, and just babies being killed in horrific ways, the only way to sync that with your worldview that everybody's basically good is that, oh, well, something terrible must have happened to them. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we have TikTok, which is pretty much always stupid. So it just fits right in. Apparently, TikTok has discovered Osama bin Laden. Yes, that Osama bin Laden, the one that crashed planes into the World Trade Center. They have discovered his letter to America, which explains why he did that. And apparently they agree with him an awful lot because a rash of TikTokers has come forward and explained that actually Osama bin Laden was right in doing what he did in a lot of ways. So let's go ahead and hear from some of the geniuses over there at TikTok. So I just read a letter to America and I will never look at life the same. I will never look at this country the same. I will never, I, <laughs> please read it. And if you have read it, let me know if you are also going through an existential crisis in this very moment. And actually, before you even read the letter, I did want to mention, in reading the letter, I could only think of this tweet that I saw the other day. Under settler colonialism, any kind of resistance is branded as terrorist because the only acceptable violence is violence by the occupier. So this is f***ing insane. I just read Osama bin Laden's letter to America, which I will be going through right here. Reading this letter, it becomes apparent to me that the actions of 9-11 and those acts committed against the USA and its people were all just the buildup of our government failing other nations. The way this letter is going viral right now is giving me the greatest sense of relief. If you're Muslim and you've lived in the US since 9-11, you know more truth than the typical citizen. Now it's all coming to light because of Palestine. Okay, now you're probably going to be watching that and, and sitting there thinking, Caleb's just going to rip into these people. And I am. But I'm going to give you a take here that I don't think you're going to see in many other conservative circles. And I know that this story has had some time to age and so may have had a little more time to reflect on it and everything. But I'm going to give you an answer I don't think you expected here today. I think they're right. Now, they're not morally right. So before you start throwing things at your computer screen, do understand what I'm saying here. If you start out from a premise or a worldview that is completely devoid of God, that really takes the sort of Marxian worldview that they subscribe to, actually Osama bin Laden's letter makes a lot of sense. Now, the problem is that is a bat crap crazy worldview to have to start with. I'm just saying that this is something that actually shouldn't be surprising, and they're not wrong if you're starting at it from their premise. You know, it's kind of like, I think that moral relativism is an abysmal blight on humanity that has led to a ton of human suffering. However, if you're starting at it from the angle of God doesn't exist, and basically you should just pursue whatever suits you and whatever pleasures that you feel are best in your short existence here on this, you know, temporary plane. I have a hard time arguing with that because within that very specific worldview, the conclusion actually makes sense. Now you're starting from a false premise, but if you do start from that false premise, it makes sense that you wind up at that conclusion. And so I think that that's actually what's going on here. A lot of conservative commentators, which I've enjoyed it too. I'm not saying that I don't get a good chuckle out of this as well, but they look at this and talk about, oh, how stupid these guys are. No, actually, if you're starting from their premise, where they end up makes a lot of sense. They're not morally correct, but they're right within their own uh, bubble worldview. And the reason is because ultimately they live in a world where there are only two kinds of people. And this is where the Marxism comes in. There are occupiers and there are oppressors, or sorry, there are occupiers who are oppressors, and there's the oppressed. That's it. That's the only two categories you have. And so the way that they see it, especially because a lot of them consider Jews to be white people, well, this is just another form of colonialism. 
This is just a bunch of white people. By the way, Jews are not white people. A lot of the Jews that have been intermarried with and have gone through generations in Europe look more white than some of their other Jewish counterpoints, but there's an awful lot of brown Jews as well, uh, which I know blows a lot of the leftist mind. They don't realize that. Um, but anyway, so they, they see this as just another colonial outpost, just a bunch of white people oppressing and taking advantage of and exploiting a bunch of poor brown people. That's really the only thing they see. They only see race and they only see class. They're incapable of seeing anything else. And so within that very limited worldview, Everything that they're saying makes a lot of sense. And because of that, because they see one group as solely, totally evil, the oppressors, and one group as solely, totally good, the oppressed, then any action, regardless of how bad it is, taken by the oppressed against the oppressors, well, that's justified. It doesn't matter how bad it is. doesn't matter how evil it is. doesn't matter if innocent people get hurt along the way. As long as the oppressed are doing it and it hurts the oppressors, they're fine with it. This was the same stance that before he actually did start to uh, see some of the error of his ways. I'm not saying that he completely turned over a new leaf, but we actually saw later in life, Malcolm X started to come around a little bit. Before that happened, that's how Malcolm X thought. He thought, okay, well, if we're really oppressed, and by the way, in the 60s, you could make a pretty strong case for that. They really were. Uh, well, then any anything we do, any violence, anything that we do that hurts the oppressors, that's fine. There's a lot of people on the left today that never grew out of that mentality. In their mind, any ends justifies, uh, the end just justifies any means that they take to try to get to that end. And that's who they are. So ultimately, this is just all Marxism and that oppressor-oppressed dichotomy. So let's go ahead and take a look at another group of these clips, because I think that this is important as well. Everyone to stop what they're doing right now and go read. It's literally two pages. Go read a letter to America. And please come back here and just let me know what you think, because I feel like I'm going through like an existential crisis right now. And a lot of people are. So I just need someone else to be feeling this too. No one in America ever really was given the information of why did this happen? Why did 9-11 happen? And also why did the 93 at the World Trade Center happened. Like, the American people were never actually given logical reason. It was just that these people hate us because of our freedom, and that was the propaganda fed. It's Western freedom. It's their Western ideals of freedom, whatever that means. And so it's freedom for white people. I just read a letter to America. How you read that shit? If you haven't read it yet, I think if you go on the internet, it's not there because the U.S. government is trying to remove it because they don't want us to see the letter to America. Why don't they want us to see a letter to America? A letter to America is a letter to America written by Osama bin Laden, basically explaining why he attacked on 9-11. Why did they attack on September 11th? Osama bin Laden basically said in a nutshell, not only do you keep f***ing with us, but you keep f***ing with everybody. You're dropping bombs on people and it's fine, but when we do it, we're terrorists. And I'm not here to defend anybody, but I am here to say we gotta do some algebra here. If we're gonna call Osama bin Laden terrorist, so is the American government. So a couple things I will point out very quickly. First of all, when you're looking at TikTok, one of the things that as a professional broadcaster I find really funny is these people can't go like literally a sentence without having to do a retake. So you'll see when I'm doing my live show, you don't get a lot of jumps and cuts. Those happen occasionally when I pre-record an interview or something like that, but that's pretty rare. And granted, I'm not the world's best communicator. There's a, you know, a reason for that. But it's just funny to me that these people literally can't do, because first of all, a lot of the stuff that they're spouting is nonsense. And so it's hard to follow a logical trail, but they, they literally can't do more than like four or five words without having to cut and then record again. So that's already a pretty strong indicator that we're not dealing with the, uh, the sharpest pencils in the toolbox there. <laughs> Uh, so, or the uh, sharpest tool in the pencil box, whichever way you want to put it. Um, but the second thing is, I want you to notice a few things specifically that were pointed out there. And we'll go from beginning to end. You notice how the first woman, completely ignorant of the situation, says she's never, never even heard of this thing, didn't know it existed. If today is day one of you having studied the Middle Eastern conflict, Maybe it's not the best idea that your first action is to go to TikTok and, and talk to other people about it. Like, maybe learn and then do a video about it. 
like you'll see here because at the show we always post our, our sources and we want to make sure that people are educated and, and I try to do a lot of research, sometimes multiple days of research to do even a single hour long show. That's just the way that it works here. And these guys, it seems like they read something for 10 minutes, don't put together any coherent thoughts whatsoever and just jump on to give their immediate raw reaction. And I mean, there's some value in it because obviously we're sitting here talking about it and I got to be honest, watching how stupid these people are can be kind of funny. But my point in all of that is if, to, if this is the first time you've ever ventured into a subject matter, maybe the first thing you should be doing is not going on the internet and telling other people how to think. So that's the first step. Second step, you'll notice that she's really just looking for emotional validation. Just like, just like, let me know if like, there's other people out there that are feeling the same thing that I'm feeling when I read this. No one cares how you feel. No one cares how you feel. It is immaterial. And I don't really care whether you support Hamas, whether you support Israel. I don't care about any of those things if they're based on your emotions. How you're feeling is not a good rubric or not a good measuring stick for how you should determine your position in international conflicts. It's just not a smart thing to do. But to the left, since everything's morally subjective, emotional validation is really the only thing that they're looking for. That's why you have people like the Queers for Palestine that even though the Palestinians that they claim to be champion would throw them off a building face first because they're homosexual and would not think two seconds about it. Like they would, they would go outside, murder a homosexual, drop him off a building and not only not feel bad about it, they would go about their day just like it was a normal day. Like, you know, killing a homosexual is like going to the DMV for them. Like it's just a mundane task. It's just something they got to do. Despite that, they still support these people because, again, it's all about what feels good, not about what actually makes sense. All these people are looking for is some type of emotional validation, and that's why they gravitate towards this letter to America is because they feel as though this is giving them a justification for the feelings they've had that really everything has to be America's fault. And that's the thing that we saw in the videos that followed up after that one as well. You'll notice that the, the second woman there was just saying, oh, it's just Western freedom. It's just white freedom. So in other words, you're not actually arguing with the topic at hand. You're just saying, because the wrong people believe this or the people that I don't like believe it, it must not be true. She doesn't provide any evidence. She doesn't say, well, actually, here's the history on that. She provides nothing of use. She just says, well, these are the people that I know I'm supposed to dislike. And so anything that confirms that preconceived notion or that worldview that I had going into it, that must be a good thing. You see, that's the thing. They are the measuring stick. They don't believe there's an objective morality out there that says, no, killing 3,000 innocent people is incorrect. You don't just go out and kill innocent civilians that have never done you any harm because you felt like it. See, because they are their own moral compass and what they feel is their moral compass then if that happened, then there must have been a good reason for it. And so anything that confirms that thing that they already determined that they wanted to feel, well, then that must be right. And that's why, again, I say, if you're looking at it from their worldview, the fact that they like the letter to America actually makes quite a bit of sense. Ultimately, that's where we, we go with this, is that that's how they view it. But let's look at, because I thought that that was an interesting point. That's white freedom. Well, what does that mean? See, the thing is, they try to say, well, there's, there's other freedom out there and, and freedom means something different to you. First of all, I hate this movement to make words not mean things. If a word doesn't mean something, then it, there's no purpose for the word existing. Uh, I'll use one from Boy Meets World that that character made up, uh, a goobois. Okay, well, if you don't know what a, bo a goobois is, then saying it makes no sense because you don't know what it means. And so there's, it serves no purpose to say a meaningless nothing word. And they're trying to devolve a lot of words. So freedom just doesn't mean anything. Freedom means whatever you want it to mean. Okay, well, then it means nothing. If that's what freedom is, it means nothing. And here's the thing. The truth is the Palestinians, the Arabs, all those different people, they don't believe in freedom. They don't want freedom. And so you can 
you know, poo poo freedom or say that it's a bad thing or say, well, that, that's white freedom. Well, the reason for that is because the Muslims, they don't actually want freedom at all. And if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and look at this graphic. These are polls taken of people living in the area. So this specifically is a poll of people living in the Gaza Strip in the West Bank. So the Palestinians, as it were, you can look there at this question. How much do you support the military operation carried out by the Palestinian resistance led by Hamas on October 7th? You got 63% extremely support, 14.8% somewhat support in the West Bank and then uh, similar numbers in the Gaza Strip for a total of 75% supporting it. So you got 75% of the people that are deemed Palestinian that actually say, yeah, raping women, beheading babies, cooking children in ovens, all of that stuff, 100% thumbs up. We love it. Do more of it. How do you deal with people like that? These are people that don't want freedom. They want dead Jews. That is the goal. I know that's uncomfortable. I don't like saying it because I wish it weren't true, but it is. They don't want freedom. They want Hamas to kill more Jews. That is the goal. They have no desire to be free as we understand it. They just want Jews to be dead. And this would be true whether it were in Israel or anywhere else. These are the same people that throw parades when you have Muslim terrorists killing people at Charlie Hebdo in Paris. They don't care where the Jews are. They just want the Jews dead. Like they'd rather them not be in Israel, obviously. But ultimately, they don't care about that. They just want all the Jews to be dead. That's why they chant the things they do. That's why they chant death to the Jews. That's why they say that they'll eliminate them all and refer to them as Satan and all of these other things. They just want dead Jews, and that poll proves that. The vast majority of the, the citizens there, they like that stuff. That's what they want. Let's also look at this poll. So this one from the same group, the Arab World for Research and Development. How do you view the role of the following parties? And so this particular one is Hamas. You've got, again, over 70% approval for Hamas almost 80. So the idea that these people, they just, as Americans, we want to believe that everybody really wants freedom. They really don't. Most people do not want that. We want freedom. We hold it as a very high virtue, but most people don't. That's a sad reality, but it's the truth. They would much rather have a organization that represents them that wants to kill as many Jews and as many Americans and as many non-Muslims as possible. That's the goal. That's what they actually want. They don't care about freedom. And so in some sense, the woman that was on that video earlier is right that they don't care about it. And this is the real clincher for all of this. This is a poll that was conducted by all Muslim countries in the Pew Research Center so this is a percentage of Muslims in favor of making Islamic law, Sharia law, the official law of their country. Now, it varies somewhat in these different regions, and you can tell that there's more support for that than others in certain regions. But look down at Palestinian territories. 89%. Have you read Sharia law? I have. There's nothing freeing about it. It dictates everything down to how many times you have to pray and that women aren't allowed to leave the house without having themselves covered head to toe and with a male relative and all these other. There's no freedom in Sharia law, believe me. And yet that's what 89% of Palestinians want. They want the Jews out and they want to create their own state where they operate by Sharia law. That's what they desire. They don't want freedom. If they did, they'd already be living in Israel where 20% of the population are Arab Muslims and live quite freely. Those are the people that are already there. And so this idea that people just really yearn for freedom, I'm sorry, they don't. The, the stats just do not bear that out. There's no evidence of that. And then I want to get to the last guy real quick because I thought that his was really... Uh, good as well. At least it gives us insight into the enemy's worldview. So basically, 
I found his funny because it started out incorrect. He said, well, the, the government's trying to keep us from getting it. No, the Guardian removed it. We were talking about they, they're censoring us and they don't want us to read Letter to America. Yeah, that wasn't the federal government, even though, I mean, the federal government's full of leftists at this point. It, I, I would have no scruples about being upset with them for censoring it, but they didn't. In fact, I saw the Letter to America on a government website. So they're not trying to hide it. What he was accusing the people of hiding it, that was actually the Guardian that removed it, which is a very left-leaning news website. So first of all, you can tell this guy's an idiot because he doesn't even know the story or know what he's talking about. But he also got to the point where he's saying, well, you know, ultimately, if we're going to call what Osama bin Laden did with bombing the World Trade Center terrorism, well, then that means that because we bomb people in those countries that we must be terrorists too. It's the same thing. Uh, no, but he comes from a world again where all actions are morally equivalent. Al-Qaeda versus America is the same thing as Hamas versus Israel. Ultimately, if the end result is killing a person, well, then that action is morally equivalent. Well, it can be, but there's a world of difference in shooting a guy in the head because you wanted his wallet versus shooting a guy in the head because he was about to commit a rape. Like those are two completely different things. There is a world of moral difference between those two. One, you're actually defending somebody, whereas the other one, you're doing something to enrich yourself. You're doing it for selfish purposes. And so there's times where exactly the same action can be completely different based upon the context they're in. And it's so funny to me that whenever Hamas does something all the people on the left want to roll out, whoa, 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 we've, we've got to add context and we have to add this in the context of the, the full conflict, which by the way, I'm fine with. It's just they never actually do that. But then the second Israel does the same thing, that no context. Can you believe that? That was outrageous that they, they bombed a school bus. Well, the school bus was being used to transport terrorists and terrorist supplies. So, well, that doesn't matter. You see, they're all in favor of the context when they think the context helps them and they don't want to add the context when they think it works against them i just say add the context in every situation but that's the calculus that he won't make if if one country is bombing another country or one terrorist group is bombing another terrorist group well they're all just morally equivalent it'll you know we can't just sit here on our moral high horse and say that it's wrong for the al-qaeda organization or the taliban to fly a plane into the World Trade Center and kill 3,000 innocent people if we're also going to go out there and do precision strikes and kill terrorist leaders like Osama bin Laden. Uh, yes, we can. Those two things are very, very different. And so this is the moral idiocy and the, the very low-level moral reasoning that we see in society today. It's unfortunate, but the common thread in all of this is total and utter ignorance. People that admittedly, by their own admission, didn't know about any of this stuff, never heard of any of this stuff, and then just picked up the letter one day and they're like, oh, well, I, it's it, they're treating it as though it's divine revelation taken down from Mount Sinai. And they treat it that way. It's absolutely absurd. But I want you to actually look at this letter. I want you to read the actual letter. That, that was the one thing that I actually wound up agreeing with them on. Everybody, every American should read this letter. And there's some discrepancy because of some of the things that they cited. I think that they're actually confused because there's actually two letters to America. There's, a, I believe, a 2014 one and a 2002 one. I've read them both. Um, well, I say that. I've read most of the 2014 one. It's actually like 38 pages long, I think, the 2014 version. So I've read most of it. Uh, the 2002 one only is th like a few pages long. So I've read, let's see. 2002 one is, I think, eight pages, and she said it was two pages, so I think she's actually thinking of a different letter, but there's one that's like 38 pages. So again, it depends on which letter you're talking about, but the one that they seem to be referencing and the one that was taken down from the, the Guardian was the eight-page one that came out in 2002, so that's the one we're going to look at today. So real quick, let's just go ahead and look at these things, and you might actually see why their worldview tends to line up with it quite nicely and why the left was freaked out by the fact they thought that even that was a bridge too far for them. So they didn't want these young, impressionable liberals picking up on Osama bin Laden's ideas because that makes they know how bad that makes them look. So let's go ahead and look at the first segment of this letter. Well, I say it, it's not in chronological order. This is just 
uh, done based on topic. So you'll see there's several things about Osama bin Laden's letter. Uh, first of all, he'll say, Palestine, which is sunk under military occupation for more than 80 years, the British handed over Palestine with your help and support, talking about America there. To the Jews who have occupied it for more than 50 years, years overflowing with oppression, tyranny, crimes, killing, expulsion, destruction, and devastation, the creation and continuation of Israel is one of the greatest crimes, and you are the leaders of its criminals. And then he, got, of course, goes on. And then he says the creation of Israel is a crime which must be erased. So you can already see this lines up with pretty much everything that the left has been chanting and the left has been saying for the past several weeks since this conflict started. So it's really no surprise that they would find themselves aligned with Osama bin Laden. And then it goes on to say, you are the nation that presents, uh, permits usury, which has been forbidden by all religions. That's true. That's not true, but I won't go into that right now. Yet you build your economy on investments and usury. As a result of this, in all its different forms and guises, the Jews have taken control of your economy, through which they have taken control of your media and control aspects of your life, making them servants and achieving their aims at your expense, precisely what Benjamin Franklin warned against. And then he goes on to say, you steal our wealth in oil, paltry prices of your international influence and military threats, this theft is the biggest theft ever witnessed by mankind in the history of the world. Your forces occupy our countries. You spread your military bases throughout them. You corrupt our lands. You besiege our sanctuaries to protect the security of the Jews and ensure your continuity of your pilgrimage, uh, pillage of our treasures. Sorry. So it's real easy to see here that most of this stuff is just boilerplate anti-Semitism. There's really nothing special or new about it. It's not even like the new anti-Semitism we see from places like the alt-right or the neo-Nazi movement. It's really just like plain old anti-Semitism that's been around for thousands of years. It's this whole thing about Jews controlling you with money and Jews controlling you uh, with your media and all these other things. So apparently just like standard anti-Semitic tropes are the things that have wowed these people and said, you know what, he makes a really, really good solid point. But the reason that they're saying that is because all of the stuff that he's saying meshes in really well with modern leftism because the left itself has become wildly anti-Semitic. Let's look at this next one. Also, the American army is part of the American people. It is the very same people who are shamelessly helping the Jews fight against us. Uh, and then he goes on. This is why the American people cannot be innocent in all of the crimes committed by the Americans and Jews against us. Again, just more anti-Semitism. We hate you because you support the Jews. Then he goes on. We also call you to deal with us and interact with us on the basis of mutual interests and benefits rather than the policies of sub dual theft and occupation and do not continue your policy of supporting the Jews because this will result in more disasters for you. If you fail to respond to all these conditions, then prepare for a fight with the Islamic nation. I mean, and then he goes on to quote a verse from the Quran. That's about as clean cut as it gets. It's very clear that what he's saying there is that you are supporting the Jews. That is why we oppose you. And the only way that you will not be fighting a war with us, which I don't believe that for a second, but he said that the only way to stop this war is if you stop supporting the Jews. So the mere fact of wanting Israel to exist and have their own nation and be able to stay on their land, that apparently is enough for Osama bin Laden to kill innocent women and children. And somehow in the minds of these idiot young people, they think that, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. It's because we're supporting the Jews and want the, the Muslims to not kill them. So I guess that in their mind is justification enough to bomb innocent people. Oh, you mean we're, we're not letting them kill innocent Jews so the proper response to that is, of course, to kill innocent Americans. How do these people, like, these people probably have driver's license. That scares the crap out of me. <laughs> these guys are imbeciles. But this is what they've been fed their entire lives, and because of that, they go along with it. Let's go and look at another part of this letter. The freedom and democracy that you call for yourselves, again, we're not a democracy, even Bin Laden apparently doesn't understand this. Uh, for yourselves is for the white race only. Again, that mirrors exactly what the lady was saying in the video 
that it's just it's white freedom and it's Western freedom. As for the rest of the world, you impose them on your monstrous restrictive policies and governments, which you call American friends, yet you prevent them from establishing democracies. When the Islamic Party of Algeria, uh, we'll, we'll go into that. We'll just skip ahead from that one. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, you have destroyed nature with your industrial waste and gases. In history, your law is the law of rich and wealthy people who hold sway in their political parties and fund their election campaigns with gifts. Behind them stand the Jews who control your policies and media economy. So again, we're going back to the Jews who are controlling the media and the economy and everything else. But he also is like, well, it's your, your freedom is really only for white people, and that's what you really need. And you've also destroyed nature with your industrial race, and your law is the law of wealthy people. Again, every single one of these talking points, I guarantee you I could walk on any Ivy League campus and like 95% of the people would say all of this stuff. And so when you wonder how is it that these people could be roped in by this, it's because he's saying exactly the same thing that their idiot professors in all of these elite universities are saying. So let's go ahead and move on to the next segment of this. These tragedies and calamities are only a few examples of your oppression and aggression against us. It is commanded by our religion and intellect that the oppressed have a right to return the aggression. So again, victimhood status the left's favorite thing. Well, they're victims. So of course, any action that they take against the oppressor is justified because they're the oppressor. Do not away anything from us, but jihad, resistance, and revenge. It is any way, is it in any way rational to expect that after America has attacked us for more than half a century, that we will leave her in security and peace? Again, they always try to paint America as the aggressor. They never actually add any context or explain well, you know, there were people killing our people. And so that's the reason we had to go in and kill them. It's exactly the way they're treating Israel now. doesn't matter that you went in and raped and killed people on October the 7th. It's still wrong for you to go in and to try to bust up a hospital, even if we know for a fact that their headquarters is located directly under the hospital. It's the same kind of rationale. And then he goes on to say, this argument contradicts your continuous repetition that America is the land of freedom and its le and leaders in this world. Therefore, the American people are the ones who choose their government by way of their own free will, a choice which stems from their agreement to their policies. Thus, the American people have chosen, consented to, and affirmed their support for the Israeli oppression of Palestinians, the occupation and usurpation of their land, and its continuous killing, torture, and punishment and expulsion of the Palestinians. Again, show me like, I don't know, an ounce of evidence for any of that. Like, if anything, I think Israel is way too meticulous in these things. I think that they need to take the gloves off a little bit. But that's where we are. Again, it fits into every left-wing talking point. And the thing is, for years, the left has had a cognitive dissonance about this. They know that it's wrong. It's hard for them to deny that it's wrong to fly a plane into a building and kill a bunch of innocent civilians. But as people that believe that America is the source of all evil and that they must be wrong in some way, and that ultimately people aren't bad. You remember when Rosie O'Donnell, who is a lesbian herself and would be killed immediately if she visited one of these countries, she said, well, you know, even the people that flew the planes into the, into the buildings, they're not bad people. That goes into their worldview too. You remember we covered this. This is one of the big lies that the left tells is that they believe that people are basically good and that ultimately it's society that corrupts them. All people are born inherently good. It's just that all these bad ideologies or whatever come by or, you know, they're retaliating against us or it's somehow America's fault. We're the only country in the world that has agency and can make its own decisions, apparently. But that's how they view this thing. Ultimately, they believe that if we are attacked, it's ultimately our fault because people are genuinely good people. No, they're not. People are terrible. Spend five minutes with any of them. You'll find that out very soon. It's not society's influence. It's that people by their very nature are selfish and evil. Now, the biblical worldview would suggest this and then also say, but then they can be redeemed by giving their lives over to Christ. All people are evil. They have depravity. They do not want things that are for the greater good. They are ultimately self-interested, but through Jesus Christ, they can overcome that. The non-biblical worldview says the opposite, that people are basically good and that they just get corrupted. It's not true. I have a whole episode about that. I won't go into more detail because you can go back and watch it on this channel if you want. 
But that's really the problem that the left has been dealing with ever since the beginning of this thing is that they ultimately wanted that to be true. And they had no way to justify that when they see the atrocities of 9-11. They come across this letter and like, oh, you see, it really wasn't their fault. It really wasn't their fault. It was ultimately our fault or, or how we failed, Amer uh, we as Americans failed other countries. No, there are some people that are just terrible, horrible people that do hate you. That can be true as well. So let's go on. And, and this really sort of is the cherry on top of the whole thing. This was, I thought, the most telling of all the TikTok clips. And I'll, I'm sure you'll be able to see why. This morning, I read Letter to America, which is Osama bin Laden's letter to America explaining why he attacked Americans. And I am ashamed to say that I not only have never read this letter, but I didn't even know this letter existed. It's wild and everyone should read it. If you haven't read it yet, read it. And I feel the same exact way I felt when I was deconstructing Christianity. I feel <laughs> Uh, a little bit just confused, like I have entered into another timeline. What is this? So you can see there, and I'm sure that you caught on to it. The whole thing is, oh, well, it's, it's just like when I was deconstructing Christianity. It's like I've gone into another timeline. Yeah, that's the point I've been making since the beginning of this. The reason that people are seeing this incorrectly is because they have an incorrect worldview. They're viewing it through a dirty lens. And so... Ultimately, the reason that I say, and I know it's a bit controversial, but the reason that I say they're actually right is because if you're looking at it through the same lens that they are, they're actually reaching the correct conclusion. It's just the lens that they're looking through is a bad lens. It's a dirty lens. And so ultimately, that's where we wind up. I, the truth is, that last video, I straight up thought it was a Babylon B parody. I really did. Like I watched it and then saw her mannerism and the fact that she's a seemingly well-to-do white lady that has probably never worked a day in her life uh, saying all of these things. is like, oh, it's just like when I was deconstructing Christianity, I was like, that's got to be a parody. But apparently it's real. And so she's just saying the quiet part out loud. Ultimately, when you have a godless worldview, these are the kinds of idiotic moral decisions that you wind up with. Because... If criminals and terrorists are not bad, then they just have bad circumstances. Then you have to figure out a way to justify that in your mind in order to see the atrocities that they commit and simultaneously figure that out. So if you see, you know, throngs of, of women and children that were murdered on October 7th and uh, countless rapes and, and just babies being killed in horrific ways, the only way to sync that with your worldview that everybody's basically good is that oh, well, something terrible must have happened to them. There must be some kind of circumstance that explains why they are the way they are. Well, there is. It's they're human beings, and they, ha they also have a godless worldview, and that's what led them to this. And so ultimately, that's where they are. And when I say godless, I'm not saying that they don't have a god. Of course, they worship all. I'm saying godless in the sense that it is absent of the true character of God. But ultimately... This was the same policy because, I mean, idiots on TikTok, what they think is really not that big a deal. Uh, you can find a stupid person that believes almost anything. I mean, there's whole channels dedicated to flat earthers. So the fact that you can find idiots out there is really not that big a deal. But here's the reason why it is a big deal and the reason that I chose to feature it on the Daily Dose of Stupid. It's not just idiots on TikTok. They're merely articulating the actual beliefs of the left. If you don't believe me, Remember when Barack Obama basically said the biggest problem with the Middle East and the reason that there's all this turmoil over there and the reason they're all fighting and can't get along with one another was because they need jobs. See, if we could just give them the same things that we have, then they would think exactly the same thing we would. That's the reason that he's shipping, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars in euros, by the way, because it's illegal for the president to send dollars over there because it would violate our policy of, of buying off terrorists, um, buying off, uh, sorry, paying off terrorists in order to get hostages back. You see, ultimately, that was Barack Obama's worldview, too, and it manifested itself in his policies. That's why it's not just a bunch of random idiots on TikTok saying stupid things. I mean, that's what we've been watching, but it's not just them. These are making real policy differences because this is the same worldview that Barack Obama did, and he's come to the same conclusions. He just has the good sense not to say them out loud. And so because of that, we're seeing through the actions of leftist politicians, 
the manifestation of the idiotic ideas that these people on TikTok are articulating. And that's why ultimately it's so dangerous. And ultimately the common denominator for all of it is a hatred of God. In the same way that the Muslims hate a God of life that loves everybody and wants to have everybody be saved and come into the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. You also have the leftists that align with that worldview that ultimately also hate the idea of a loving God that commands and demands things of them in that sense. And so that's why, in a weird sense, even though they hate each other and will wind up killing each other if given the opportunity, at least to align themselves against the ideas of God, they will join forces with one another. You'll have the rainbow flags flying right next to the jihad flags, even though they'll all murder each other the second that there is no longer a godly people in order for them to oppose. The common denominator, as usual, is a hatred of the one true God. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV Guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. <laughs>